So let's talk with Harjab. Dosto, uh, welcome to MA TV Studios. You must be surprised why I am here. Actually, I am sitting for Harjab Pangal today. And we are going to talk to Seema Malhotra, who was the sitting member of parliament for the constituency of Feltham and Heston. And uh, Seema Malhotra, as I said, is the sitting MP for the Lib from the Labour Party constituency of Heston and Feltham. There are three candidates uh, in all. There are two from the Asian origin. One is Seema Malhotra, and the other one is Samir Jassal from the Conservative Party. The Lib Dem candidate is Roger Crouch, and uh, Samir Jassal is the sitting councillor also in, uh, uh, from another area. And the Roger is a lawyer by profession. And if we go by the previous election of 2015, Seema Malhotra won by 11,463 votes against uh, conservative candidate uh, Simon Nair. And uh, we are in the process of uh, calling or inviting the other two candidates to the MATV studios in the in due course. And uh, Seema Malhotra was born uh, in uh, in uh, in Heston, where Heston? In, born in Hammersmith, grew Hammersmith. up in Austerley. Hammersmith. Hammersmith Hospital. Yeah, Hammersmith um, Hospital. Grew up in Austerley, yeah. Uh, so. uh, that's where my grandson also born. Oh. So we got some kind of similarity. Anyway, welcome to the studio, Seema. Thank you, Dr. Sajidi. I, I will just say, I think since that, um, uh, entry, there has been some changes on the candidate mm. side as well. Mm. So there are now five candidates. Oh, there are five yes, candidates now. And um, so there are five candidates, Green Party, UKIP. Okay. And um, a different candidate for the Liberal Democrats. Mm -hmm. So I think that was quite late that that yeah. got um, No, got we didn't changed. have that information. Mm. Uh, we do apologize. And uh, Green Party, who's the candidate, you know? Tony Firkin. Okay. Yes. And uh, from the UKIP? Stuart Agnes. Okay, so we could, we, you got five candidates, yeah. but you are the sitting MPs and you won with majority mm. of, as I said before, you know, for 11,463. Mm. And uh, Seema Malhotra, uh, 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 Malhotra ceased to be member of the House of Commons on 3rd of May 2017 general elections, and uh, Theresa May declared uh, these ele elections all of a sudden actually how did you feel when she suddenly said that we are going to have elections i was pretty shocked i think most people were to be honest because mm. nobody expected or thought it was necessary to have this election yeah. and it has been quite disruptive mm. to our work in in parliament issues that we were working on mm. we have to work as well to maintain our, i believe our um, service and case work. Mm. So, as well as running the campaign, there's a, a, a level yeah, for non-urgent case work we continue. So, it was a big surprise. People didn't expect her to do it at this yeah, time. Yeah, actually, some analysts did, because if you got that kind of popularity, mm. then uh, you will have the snap elections. Because at the end of the day, people will say, Theresa May was not actually elected as prime minister mm. she was actually chosen as the prime minister so called you know mm. so she wanted the mandate on that well there's an important point about mm. having the mandate and mm. indeed she was mm. sometimes challenged for not having a mandate on the other hand the conservatives mm. had won an election just 2 years ago yeah. so she was only 18 months in mm. and with a, a majority in parliament so I think there are speculation about the reasons why. Mm. I think a big reason mm. was that she had now triggered Article 50 and she knew that the newspapers were going to be full of mm. challenge mm. and uh, debate about the European mm -hmm. Union. And uh, while she says that she wants you know, a, a, do, um, do you, to do, you to think do more, I'll... I think it, I th the, the thing, we just, I'll just finish this point. The thing is a bit of a concern is her approach to Brexit has been do it behind closed doors, not mm. even bringing things to Parliament. Mm. And so this election is another way in which I believe that we're, we're not engaging the public in, in, in the debate very meaningfully. Do you think she sees the opportunity considering that Jeremy Corbyn is relatively a weaker candidate? Well, that's uh, it's certainly an argument. And it's a, it's a, it's a reality of the, um, of, of the polls. I, I think the... 
point is, two, two points to make. Firstly, I didn't expect her to do it at this time. And for the reason that this is a really important time for Parliament. Mm. So as we go forward and we have the Great Repeal Bill, mm -hmm. thousands of pieces of legislation mm. coming have to come from the mm. European mm -hmm. um, EU law and be brought into British law, yeah. British, under British statute. Mm. The work for parliamentarians is increasing, is going to increase rapidly, mm. and the need for scrutiny. Mm. So, on the one hand, if you've got a two year window for Brexit mm. negotiations, mm. why would you want to have such disruption? And is that in the nation's interest? Mm. Um, but secondly, mm. I think that I can understand if she may have wanted to do it more towards the end of negotiations. But I don't think it was appropriate now, and, and the Labour well, Party is going she, to be she has where declared the elections where we got to fight that election. I agree. And uh, you are uh, you are you are elected uh, you are elected member of uh, British Select Committee on mm -hmm. Brexit. Well, yes. Uh, and uh, in October 2017, you are going to be uh, in that process. So, what will be the stand of the Labour Party? Yeah. So, so yes, I was elected in October onto um, onto the Select Committee. Mm. And I mean, this was something I was also debating with um, the, the Lib De Liberal Democrat candidate. Her mm. name is Hina mm. Malik. It was changed mm. from Roger Crouch. We were debating at Hustings mm. uh, yesterday as well um, about Brexit and what we've done. It was Hustings, actually. The Conservative candidate yeah, didn't it? come, didn't show up. <laughs> uh, everything, everybody was very surprised. Um, right. So, um, so I, I, but the, the, the point was about the Brexit Select Committee it's performed a very important function the last mm -hmm. six months mm -hmm. in saying how should the parliamentary process work? How do we negotiate with the public? Mm -hmm. What are the issues around uh, Ireland particularly, mm -hmm. um, where one part of Ireland is in the EU, yeah. uh, in, yeah. in, in, um, uh, yeah. in the Euro as well, mm -hmm. and the other part is, is not. Uh, if we're, it's, and there's also the EU, issue of When we leave, they won't be. Um, so, the, so the issue was, well, Scotland is different in this mm. sense. So, you, you know, Ireland is one yeah. physical island, mm. but two, it's got the Republic, the, the Republic um, and the other one. which in its own right is, is yeah. in the EU. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so, and then you've got the um, Northern Ireland. Northern, Northern Ireland, Ireland, which so. is part and parcel of the United Kingdom. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so the impact of leaving mm the European Union is causing tension about do you have a border, yeah. do you have customs, and yeah. those sorts of yeah. Yeah. issues. So, and there's also a question of uh, Scotland also. Scotland has uh, been an as issue. As Nicola Sturgeon is saying that we want another referendum and so on. Yes, and that has been an issue. So Scotland voted to remain, just as London overall yes. voted to remain, mm. different in different areas. Mm. Uh, the, the Brexit Select Committee has been very influential in both calling for a vote and mm. being, uh, there being a, a, a vote agreed in Parliament by um, the Prime Minister as well at the end of the process. Uh, various other points as well. We, you know, we advocated for the government to produce a white paper. Mm -hmm. The government then produced the white mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. So uh, also on, on other issues as well. It's been very influential. Scotland, you're right, mm -hmm. voted to remain. Mm -hmm. And the Scottish Parliament has said mm -hmm. that Scotland should remain in the single market. Mm -hmm. And are concerned about the impact on the Scottish mm -hmm. economy. I visited Scotland as well as part of the work of the Brexit Select Committee. Mm. And there were a, a large proportion of the population that also voted to mm -hmm. leave. There were some industries that believe they'll be better off mm. if we leave the European Union, mm. but many that also don't believe that. So it's, it, it's a mixed picture as well. What has happened in London mm. where um, that we've had a, a similar issue where London voted to remain, mm. is that Sadiq Khan has said we need to have a Brexit that's going to work for London. Yes. So let's tackle the issues around the economy mm -hmm. and the special needs of London, mm. um, around maybe having work permits, uh, regional work permits, and different immigration um, controls. For London. And, but not just for London, but <laughs> each region being able to yeah. think, how does my economy work mm. and what do we need? And so, in a sense, that debate and that dialogue is ongoing and has to be part of Okay, we will talk about uh, Brexit a bit more later on. Mm. But what I see is you've got quite uh, a high profile in a limited space of time. You've been MP. You were first selected in 2011. And uh, now it is the third election. And 
by nature, we are all optimistic, you know, of winning, and I'm sure you will win. My best wishes are with you. But uh, why do you think people should be voting for you? I believe very strongly that you uh, want to vote for, and I think voting for a local person as well mm. is, is, can be quite important for an area. I grew up in Hounslow. I went to school in Heston. I uh, grew up in Feltham as well. Yeah, you know the area very well. I know yeah. it well. I volunteered there with when I was a teenager with uh, people with disabilities and, and elderly people. And in a sense, you understand the fabric of a community. Mm -hmm. So being a community MP has been very important and also, also recognising the experience my parents had mm -hmm. growing up with a shop in Osterley and living mm -hmm. above that, mm -hmm. working hard to make ends meet and often putting those... Uh, yeah. those You're the best against... example of successful daughter of successful immigrants. Yeah, and running a shop like many of our Asian yeah. families do as well. But it, it's also about our priorities. Mm. I mean, my priorities, what I've worked on in Parliament mm. around uh, yeah. equalities issues, around economy issues, around business issues, mm. entrepreneurship, very much part of the fabric of yeah. how our community works. Yeah. And I think on the education, NHS, mm and business those yeah. are things that people talk to me about a lot and where i believe that my track and, record is is yeah, certainly one yeah. that will support the community and you must have got a lot of experience when uh, you were the shadow chief secretary to the treasury mm. from 2015 to 2016 then you were shadow minister in the home office mm. and then you were opposition bip in commerce so, so you got wider mm. uh, experience in these kind of things how the parliament is run mm. That will I, that will go to your credit. Well, I I think that will be for people to decide. I think I've been very always very open and um, mm. uh, about what I've done in Parliament and working seven days a week for the constituency mm -hmm. in different ways. And I was also um, I think one thing I'm particularly proud of is I led a lot of the campaign that mm. led to the reversal of the mm. the government's proposed tax credits changes. And that would have meant, if we hadn't succeeded, that 17 million would have been lost from the Hounslow economy mm. this year. Mm -hmm. It's a credit that supports people who are working, mm -hmm. but on lower incomes, mm -hmm. even for a period of time. And for our constituency, that, that would be a huge amount that would take well, not just out of people's incomes, but then out of the businesses they shop in. Yeah. So I do agree with you. And what's been very fortunate for me is to be able to work in different roles in Parliament yeah, yeah. to understand how politics works there mm. and also to build relationships with other parties. Mm. On some issues, mm. you need to work cross-party mm. and that has been a very, very yeah, important that part That was a valuable experience uh, for you. Mm. Uh, when we talked last time, you were anti-third runway at Heathrow. Have you changed your mind? It is still there. I have a cautious approach uh, as the, the same, really, a cautious approach to expansion. There are these two points, however. Um, there's over two-thirds of our local economy is directly mm. or indirectly yeah. dependent on Heathrow. Mm. And there's also a very interesting point for my constituency, Feltham and Heston, mm. that 16% of people are working in jobs relating to the transport sector. Yeah. That's right. That is the highest of mm. any constituency in the country. Yes. So the dependence or on one Heathrow, way or the other, they are related to uh, to Heathrow Airport. Directly or indirectly, mm. the tran in the transport yeah, sector, that's what I mean. they it will be Heathrow is a big is the major yeah, yeah. contributor, <laughs> but that's the highest in the country. Mm. Nobody wants to put Heathrow at risk. What is interesting mm. is that polling shows mm. that. Um, uh, about a third of people in, in the Hounslow Borough don't mm. want a third runway. Um, about 40%, 30-40% do, and then a certain number are undecided. So there's a majority mm. in favour mm. or indifferent to expansion. Yeah. And I hear it a lot in my constituency. My constituency is marginally in favour of expansion. But what I've always said mm. is that we can't have expansion at any cost. Mm. We've got to see that we're meeting the air pollution targets. We've yeah. got to see we're meeting the environment targets. Mm. We can't be breaking the law on these matters. We've got to see because compensation we, for our community being far more mm. than it is now. Because so there's this talk, journey to go still. When we talk to people, I talk to people, you know, the, they are giving priority to the jobs. They are saying we want the jobs first, then mm. the environment next. Mm. That, I think that is why you use the word cautious. Mm. That's exactly right. Mm. Because... 
people understand that jobs do come mm. high on the list. Mm. If you don't have a job, you can't do all the other things. Yeah. And it's one of those things people under, I understand, and mm. people, under, people have said this to me, that what people want at a basic level, yeah. everybody wants the job, a good job, a good money home. Money coming in, pay the bills. Yeah. Support the family, yeah. be able to have the pride in supporting yeah, the yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they want good job, they want good home, mm. and they want good education for the children, and mm. they want a good health service. So basically you will support the third runway as long as the environment issue environment is sorted support, out. Uh, in, I think this is, these are still mm. areas where there's, there's still a journey to go. The mm. air pollution, mm. environmental issues, and also compensation for the community. For the people who will be moving away from the area. Not, not just that, mm. but compensation for people who are living there. Mm. Noise compensation. Mm -hmm. Other well, aren't we already doing, you know, we are giving them the money to have the double glazing ah, not nearly and enough. soundproofing, so that's not enough. Heathrow's record is worse than every other airport mm. on the level of contribution to the local community. So the, the people living community. in the area, they should have more money. They, there should be more going to the yeah. schools as well mm. and, the, and the residents mm. and making sure that the impacts of being around Heathrow, there's mm. a much greater contribution mm. to the community. Mm. So I do think there's still a journey to go. People are right to be concerned, but two thirds of, uh, I've, I've had 2,000 people write to me mm. in support of expansion. All right, mm. so there are people who are- Definitely <coughs> there are people yeah. for their jobs reason mm. as well. Because uh, don't forget, we are all a little bit of selfish in the sense that if I, mm. my children or myself, I'm not working at Heathrow Air, but I will say I want cleaner air. Mm. And then uh, there are people mm. whose friends, whose relatives or mm. their family, they are working at Heathrow, they'll give a different version of it. That's true, um, uh, Dr. Sophie but I, I'll say this point, which is the air pollution mm. often arises from people driving. Yes. And people who may have older cars or mm. diesel, mm. That, that, you know, there can be more yeah. pollution as mm. well. Mm. That's why I believe very strongly, this is um, something I'm calling for as well, is that there should be different incentives for people to mm -hmm. change their cars, mm. to change possibly to electric vehicles as well. And then when you do some measures like that in more polluted areas, mm then it will reduce the local pollution, yeah. which can have a very big impact. And that's yeah, a big uh, part of what I believe. You're right, actually, do. because cars are the biggest. Uh, uh, that's the main source. Danger the to the environment. Yes. Yeah. But that is gradually, I gradually, I think, really sorted out itself. You know, the science is progressing. Mm. And there are electric cars, as you say, mm. even driverless. <laughs> well, even drivers. But I recently um, uh, bought an electric car. Oh, yeah. And I. Yeah. Whilst you have to plan a bit more, mm. you can't do long journeys in the same way. Yeah. It has made a big difference. And I think that we need to do a lot more now. The government needs to do a lot more. And they resisted even publishing an air pollution strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to be taken, you know, in a sense, the court to make that ruling that they had to bring oh. forward a strategy. And I, so I believe very strongly there's more that must be done. We reduce the pollution coming from the vehicles. And... It, that is the major part of the pollution in the area in which we live. And also Sadiq Khan, as he said, you know, the cars with the diesel engine and the old ones, mm -hmm. uh, they got to be stopped, I literally stopped coming to the yeah. London I'm very or proud put of a charge on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very proud of Sadiq for that okay. because how much impact it has on health, older people, mm. younger children yeah. with asthma. That is very true. That's what has to okay. change. Okay, let's move on. You know, Theresa May is trying to pull votes from Labour as you must have seen in the papers. Uh, sorry, I got to go for a break, then we carry on with that. Those uh, two, it's Seema Glohotra, who, is the, who was the sitting MP for Feltham and Heston. We are talking to her about the forthcoming elections, which are going to be held on 8th of June. A small break. Those so welcome back. We got uh, Seema Malhotra with us. Uh, we were talking on about various issues locally, but uh, people tend to think nationally now, and uh, where Jeremy Corbyn is standing, mm -hmm. and where their Theresa May is. What I was surprised at was that Theresa May is treading on the feet of Labour, uh, in the sense that uh, she is putting forward the policies, which are the domain of the Labour Party. For example. 
she is saying that uh, she will cap the energy prices, then she was clamped down on uh, executive pay, then she is saying that the employers will be entitled to sit on the company board, and the workers will be entitled to take paid leave to look after the elderly, elderly for a year with pay. That will ease the pressure on social services. What is the labor's answer to these? Because these are, if I can, where I'm looking from, is the labor territory she is trading on. Hmm. Well, sometimes um, copying is the sincerest form of flattery, isn't it? And I think it's a good indication hmm. of uh, where labor's winning the arguments. There's a big issue of trust, however, with Theresa May, and the election is just one issue of that trust because she said very categorically that she wasn't going to call an election. Mm. And then she called an election mm. and did it in a way that was going to be the maximum surprise and going against yeah. um, the, the law that she but had supported she, passing. On the she she, she may be opportunist, opportunistic. She, you know, you got to be when you're a politician. That's true. But and the she issue took the trust. opportunity to call the elections because she knew that she would be able to win uh, because of the labor leader being so weak, if I can put it bluntly. Mm -hmm. And uh, now she's saying that she will do all these things. For example, mm -hmm. uh, clamp down on executive pay and uh, giving the people one year paid leave to look after their elderly parents mm -hmm. or disabled uh, relatives and things like that. It is something which can attract more votes for her. The other way of looking at this is what she's actually done. So mm. she has been part of a government that's overseeing for months. For, no, her government. She's been part of the government since yeah. 2010. She's well, Shadow Home Secretary. Yeah. And that has led, that's a government that has seen 4.6 billion cut mm. from social care. Mm. People don't just talk about this issue on the doorstep. I'll give you one conversation <coughs> of what I heard this mm. afternoon. Mm where a lady said to me, what's Labour's policy on mental health? Mm. And I told her about how we've argued in Parliament mm. for there to be greater investment in mental health and public health. The government mm. last year cut 200 million in year from public health. Mm. But, but do you but think she will be able to do this, what she's I, saying? I would be surprised if she stuck to her promise. Mm. And the, tr the, the, the important point at election time is to look in the context of what somebody's actually done. Mm and not just what they say mm. and what they've and when but they've changed when their mind. The, but if you take this example as well, you probably won't know well, this. Well, if you have that but, huge mandate, you uh, know, after but, these elections, but that's, she will do what she wants. But this is the point, isn't it? The because point because is, if do, the opposition is weak. But do you trust she'll do what she says? That's the point. Mm. Do you trust that she will do what she says? What she hasn't told the mm. country mm is that she in the Conservative Party, mm. in the Cabinet, mm. they cut 600 million from mental health. Mm. 6,600 mental health nurses, mm. check, gone. And we've got a mental health crisis in this country. And I, I hear it with young people in mm. schools as well, um, as well as older people. Yes, it The did. other issue, you, did yeah. you know this? Mm. That she had cut 19,000 police officers. Mm. In, from this country while Home Secretary. Mm. She also presided over the changes to family visas. Mm. And so she's made it harder with the income threshold. Mm. That was designed to keep people out. And I get casework after casework. Okay, work. so these three points which I have pointed out, which has mm. come in the press today, as mm. a matter of fact, about this one year paid leave yeah. and uh, uh, cap on uh, energy prices, which and, Labour's uh, already talked about the last election. Well, uh, <laughs> but what you're trying to say is that she stole she's, your idea. She's saying what she yeah. feels she needs to say. She's, she stole Labour's idea. She's stolen a lot of Labour's ideas. Well, she's, yeah. she's saying what she feels okay. she needs to say. Do you think but she her track be record is not one in which you can believe hmm. that she's going to deliver that. Okay. Uh, she also says that she wants to protect workers' rights. She voted against, hmm. and the government voted against, hmm a private member's bill in Parliament mm -hmm. in January mm -hmm. to make sure that we protect workers' rights when we leave the European Union. Mm -hmm. So you have to look also at her voting record, not just what she says what if when she, she says, to say things. What, she say, what if she says it was then, but it is now? It was in January when she was Prime Minister. Yes. You see, this is the challenge. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, the question is people's, where people genuinely are. Mm -hmm. And you rightly have asked about Jeremy Corbyn, but I'll say a few things about where people have talked to me, even those who have supported the Conservative Party who have told me they're voting Labour mm -hmm. this time in the constituency. They recognise 
the problems for housing for their children. Mm. They, when I tell them that the Tories slowed down house building mm. to the lowest level since the 1920s, mm. that their record on social housing and affordable housing mm. but, slowed but almost she, completely. But she has made a statement this week, she has made a statement that she is going to build one million affordable housing and she is going to give more powers to councils and the housing associations to spare the cash and spare the spaces and also compulsory purchasing. Well, Labour had already said that we would build a million homes and that 50% of those would be affordable. Yeah. And Labour has already said that we would need to look at powers and ways in which we would fund that. Labour's already said that we need to be thinking about how we build homes in our communities, mm. um, how we keep families together. So I think there's a little bit of running to catch up with Theresa May here, and they do not have a record that they can be proud of at all in mm. relation to housing and social housing. So I think, again, people are looking. People have said to me, this is interesting. <laughs> what you're repeating is what the Tories have put in the newspapers. I understand that. Mm. But what I'm telling you is what I also hear on the doorstep. And when you, have to, when you look at what a political party is putting in the newspapers, you also have to say what they're not telling you. Mm. Then she's not telling you that she's cutting children's education funding by 8% by mm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And she refused to reverse that even in the weeks before she called the general so election. So all these policies, they were Labour policies and she has stolen them. The That's ones that saying. are popular, she has certainly yeah. taken a lot, but also she has not spoken about the issues where she's unpopular. Mm. And she's not spoken on the issues of school funding. Mm. So on these things, people have to look very closely. Mm. If children's education is being cut, class sizes are bigger, mm. ed the school day is being reduced, mm. teachers are not being replaced. These are, these are issues that are quite serious. And India. what she's not telling you is okay. what she's been doing while oh. she's been Prime Minister. Okay, the next question I'm going to ask you, you are going to laugh. It is about immigration. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that we got nearly 3 million EU migrants. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about non-EU ones because they're hardly any, well, not very credible figure. But from EU countries, we got nearly 3 million immigrants in this country. When we go for negotiations, as you are the member of the select committee as well, you are the right person to be asked this question, is do you think they should be allowed to stay in this country? Mm. I have said my view, and in fact this was unanimous mm. from the select committee, mm. that those who are here should be having the rights to stay, particularly those they've got jobs, families, mm. children at the schools. Mm. Many of them have actually been here for maybe 10, 15 years. So may even well, lots more than the five years that they can yeah, get Yeah, the most of uh, them started coming after Tony Blair. Uh, said that we will have only 13,000 immigrants yes, from Poland. Not exclusively. And we ended up 600,000 yes, and um, so on. Not exclusively, but many yeah. are also working, aren't they, and paying yeah, taxes. Indeed, yeah. and their so nurses you are in favor in our of hospital. them staying here. But also the mm. people who are living in the EU, British yeah. citizens, uh, British should people, have the right to stay. 1.5 million. Yeah, they should have the right to stay. This is where, this is very important. Mm. You, you know, the thing is that whilst, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that we'll go there, but... We've seen what can happen mm. when you don't have a politics that manages mm. these issues well. Mm. Now, there are countries where you've seen partitions of different kinds and then refugees going one way or the other. We don't want to see any of that. Mm. What we do know is that there has been a slowdown mm. um, in people coming. What we also know is that many who are, a majority, vast majority here, are working in... Uh, whether it's in construction or in our health service mm. or in um, uh, our universities. Mm. Uh, so they should be allowed to stay in this country. They're, they're paying taxes. You know, there's also, yeah. you, you've seen, you, I'm sure that you've seen the government research showing mm. that they pay, there's more paid in taxes than claimed. Well, in that, other that goes without you, saying they're hardworking people. Yeah. So <coughs> I, think, I think it's about not talking about them in, in this way because we can all talk about they, mm. you know, and, and I don't think that's but, uh, where we want to be with, with our, you know, community yeah. cohesion and a nation that's proud mm. of its openness in the world. What we all want is a fairness, don't we? Mm. And I have a, a view on immigration policy where I agree we need to have greater controls. 
I personally have asked, have advocated this, and I've tabled amendments on this in Parliament. I've talked to other European parliaments as well. I think we should look for reform of the rules on freedom of movement mm. and that other countries should also have the opportunity to have greater controls if they wish it, mm. if they feel the needs... Because all the countries the have the borders. They all, all the countries have rules and regulations, who can come, who can't come. But they have different ways yes, they work together. Different ways of dealing with it. The economies are different, their mm. neighbours are different, circumstances are different. But yeah. if we have greater controls, I think th three Cs I talk about, we would have greater controls and we should have the choice mm. how many and would, would that change each year what's mm. the needs of our economy do we need more for this sector do we need so you can have so some we, we should be flexible in our approach i think flexibility and even regional flexibility yeah. but also there should be care and compassion mm -hmm. because what's happened is mm. the the family visa situation mm. when i was shadow home office minister i also was um, uh, leading some of the calls for us to review family visas, the changes the Conservatives brought in mm -hmm. with the income threshold. That's made it very difficult even for people to come to attend weddings. And families feel, you know, yeah, their hearts be, are... Yeah. Not in, yeah. That's when they have resentment, yeah. Yeah. and I understand that. You, but we have promised uh, that we would change that mm. because you can have a different way. You want a fair immigration policy, mm -hmm. but instead of having a, an arbitrary income mm -hmm. threshold, mm -hmm making the assumption that people won't go home, mm. even if their families, businesses, homes, yeah, children yeah, are yeah, there, yeah. have an obligation that there will be no recourse to So there should be funds. compassion in there. But don't and you think... responsibility, but you can do that in a different way. Yeah, when we, when we travel abroad, especially in America, Canada, or even some European countries, they got database to check who is coming, who is going. Mm. When we are talking about illegal immigration, the problem in this country is that we have no record who is going, who is coming in. You know, you raise a very interesting point, and mm. I agree with you on this. Mm. I was very surprised mm. that even in the last six, seven years, mm. Uh, and I've said this as well, the government didn't introduce ways in which we were, particularly for EU nationals of freedom of movement, mm -hmm. having a way of recording just in the way you might want yeah. to. And other European countries do this. They do this, yes. Other European countries do this. So even should... where we could have more controls, yeah, yeah. this government in mm -hmm. the last seven years has not done that when they, they've seen this. So, they should do it. So you will push I for would, that. I, I've already said I'm, I don't understand why we aren't doing that when other see, European see, for nations example, if are you, doing it. See, if you, if you, I beg your pardon, because of the short of time mm. I'm cutting in. Uh, if you go to Canada, for example, or America, they immediately know when you came mm. here and when you left last time. You could bring up, they could bring out the history of your migration plan which we don't do it here and we should do it. In, a, for, in some aspects, in many aspects we do, but the primary issue has been freedom of movement from the European Union and the <coughs> reduced controls around that. But even with free movement, mm. you could have a system whereby the nation has a way of registering people when they come. Yes. And other European nations do do that. And if they do that, and we should that also do that is something it. that yeah. we can do, whether or not we left the European Union. Okay. Let's move on to uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, with a few days to go now, the Labour Party is at, uh, today, it is today's figure, 31%. And the uh, Conservative Party is 49%. When we talk about uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, he, there's a wider difference between his popularity and Theresa May's popularity. When you see these kind of figures, do you believe these figures, first of all? And what do you think is going to happen, mm, you think? I, those figures are very disappointing, and it is difficult for the Labour Party. Uh, it's difficult because um, of all the reasons that you have said. But I think there are these issues that are very important to this election. It isn't just going to be about the leadership as Theresa May wants to make it. Mm. Theresa May, you'll have seen, doesn't even say this is about the Conservative Party because she knows the Conservatives mm -hmm. is a toxic brand. Mm. You'll notice on the side of the bus yeah. it says Theresa May. Does it say the Conservatives? Very wow. small writing. So you yeah. have to understand the Conservatives are also okay. a toxic brand. With Jeremy Corbyn, I, am, you know, I understand what people are saying and people do raise the issue of the leadership of the Labour Party with me. What I will also say is this, mm. that this election must not be an election where we give Theresa May a blank check. 
Okay, she, let, let, and, because and we got is, just one minute. But this is the point. People should still vote for the Labour Party. We got just one minute. And they one should minute. vote for the Labour Party and for very strong local okay. candidates who what kind of future are serving you them well see, in Parliament. What kind of future do you see of Jeremy Corbyn after the elections? Well, I don't know uh, what's going to happen. Yeah. I don't know do what's you, going to happen. Do you think what there I... will be a breakaway from uh, the Labour Party, mm. main male Labour Party, as it is in the press, that uh, so-called progressive... Labour Party will uh, uh, take hold of the party? You know, there have been no conversations that I've had about that at all, and I've asked colleagues as well. So mm. somebody somewhere is talking about this, but the reality well, it is... it has happened in 1970s. Yes, but the reality is, I'll be very honest with you, mm. when I'm out mm. and we're in our communities, we're in our constituencies, the biggest issues that are coming up mm. are the NHS, mental health, somebody raised with me, universal credit rollout, particularly for self-employed being impacted, mm -hmm. the cost of small businesses going up. Mm -hmm. Nobody is really raising the issue of Brexit with me. Theresa May wants this to be about Brexit. I understand the issues of Brexit and I study them So closely. the Brexit has become and a secondary to... issue on doorstep? People want to have Brexit that isn't going to hurt the economy. Okay. But it is, it is not the, pr the primary issues people are concerned about are education, health, housing mm -hmm. and making sure that we have uh, the controls over immigration right. and to I've have the time. right I've policies for the time. economy. They want good jobs and good homes. That's what people are saying to me. run out of time. I love talking to you, Seema. And I'm sure we will talk some other time also. Thank you very much. And those, so that was the program we had. I hope you liked what we have talked. You may not have liked because that's what the democracy is. And I will be see seeing you on Thursday in my own program at 9.30 p.m. on Thursday.